Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The uh, live show is, we are broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go to our website uh, at your convenience and watch our archives when we record, because we do record the show every week. Um, yeah, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives and see all of our shows. If there, um, we record and um, show on, we put up onto the archives the actual uh, video of the show. If there are any presentations or slides or handouts or documents that are presented, we also include links to those as well. Um, if we don't, we just have websites that are yes. part of the shows we're going to do today. Yeah. Um, we do a uh, mixture of things here on uh, Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, interviews, demos, um, mini training sessions, uh, basically anything that, um, the only real criteria of the show is that something for libraries, something libraries are doing, something we think they should be doing, um, products and services they think they might want to try out, um, new programs or things they might want to do. Um, it's, it's really a huge mishmash. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in the state, so we have things that are for public, academic, K-12 schools, uh, correction facilities, special libraries. Um, we run the gamut, um, just anything that's a library. Um, and we do bring in guest speakers sometimes to talk about things, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us as well. And that's what we have this morning. With me today is uh, Sally Snyder, and she is our coordinator of Children's and Young Adult, young adult library services. services. Library Services. That is a long title. <laughs> sometimes I just say Youth Services Coordinator because it's faster. True, yep. But it's for children and teen. Yes. 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 Um, and today she's going to talk about uh, grants that we have. And actually on our website, we've got a thing here, Youth Grants for Excellence, oh, yes. um, that are um, just recently opened up to be available. So this is grants we have here at the Nebraska Library Commission for Libraries. So I'll just hand over to you to go ahead and start explaining and talking about it. Well, Oops. I I hadn't noticed that that was there, so I'm mad. But what I want to do. <laughs> Chris is going to be my driver because I forgot to get an extra mouse. That's okay. Um, if you go to Children and YA on the side here and then look way over to the bottom of more, there's Youth Grants for Excellence, and that will take you, if you click on that, to this main explanation page. And it has a lot of explanation there, but I had to put it somewhere. So if mm -hmm. you're wondering about things, you can look here. And the second short paragraph there says, visit the FAQ. If you would click on the FAQ, please. Mm -hmm. This has some general information there and then a few specifics. And I want to hit the who is eligible to apply. And the answer to that is accredited li public libraries can apply. In the next sentence, it says schools, unaccredited public libraries, service agencies, and or organizations may be involved through collaborative planning and programming with an eligible public library. So if you're a school and you want to do a project with your public library who is accredited, that's great. Or if you're an unaccredited library, look around for a nearby accredited library and see if they're interested in whatever it is you would like to do and you can work together for that. Our only requirement about that, well, we have of course, the whole thing about the application <laughs> form. But if you're partnering with an unaccredited public library or a school or one of these other groups, anything that you purchase with the grant funds, 51% of that has to go and be um, housed in the public accredited public library. Mm -hmm. And up to 49% can be housed at the unaccredited or library or the school or wherever else if mm -hmm. you're working with an organization that does after school programming for example and they want to have legos there too or something that that's our requirement about where things will end up mm -hmm. so the groups that the the institutions that are eligible are the there's two actually the accredited public libraries or state-run institutional libraries true. which we do not necessarily accredit we don't yes do, we don't yeah we don't so accredit. either one of those so those be that if you're if you are partnering if you're not one of those kinds of places and you partner with them they have to have it 51 percent of the stuff yes the physical <laughs> if it's books, whatever if it's Legos, there is yeah um 
what are those little little bits or bitty things? Sorry, I should. Yeah, that's actually the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little bits. Little, okay. Yeah, some of the the the, the robot things and right. that. Robot mm -hmm. things are fun. Yeah. So I wanted to be sure and point that out. Now, if you will back up, there's other answers there, but we'll and this those. main page will will take you to places that. Um, well, mostly it takes you back to the FAQ if it doesn't have the answer right there on the page. I was trying to make this page a little shorter, mm -hmm. but um, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this year, the application is due by 11.59.59 on October 15th. That's a Monday. Mm -hmm. So far, I'll be here at the Library Commission if you have last minute questions. You know, I'm going to show you the application form and kind of walk you through how to fill it out and what it might, when it says, hey, you know, this isn't working, how you can troubleshoot that. But also you can call me. Um, I'll be out of town the week before, but I will be in the office on Monday the 15th. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have questions the week I'm gone, call Krista. Krista maybe. knows everything. Will I? Well, okay, maybe. I'll try. <laughs> Or um, you can ask Janet because mm -hmm. she sets up the whole program. There. So you still have about a full three and a half weeks from today right. for the deadline. Yeah. And the forum's actually been able, I mean, we're doing the, the, this session right now, but the um, it actually went up and became available a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Wasn't it the beginning it was of late, September? Late August. Late August. Yeah. Okay. It's already been out there for a bit. Yeah. It's been out there. I received some applications yeah. so awesome. far. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, we will hit the application form. So the evaluation form is what we use to look at the applications and say, did they have include this? Did they include that? So we put it up here so you can look and see, oh, yeah, they do check if I have a plan or not. Oh, dang, I have to have a plan. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> um, but down a little bit, there's the online form, the, the oh, short here. form and the long form. Mm -hmm. I go with the long form because it's it has just a little bit more than the short form. Well, I want to look at that. Let's, let's okay. look at that. So again, <clears throat> we have some information. And I, I'm glad that not is in red because I almost forgot to mention this. C number six, the online form will not allow you to enter information onto part of the form, leave and return later to finish it. It all disappears. Mm, okay, so, so there's no saving. Yeah. No saving. So. Sorry. So we recommend you write it up in a different word processing program, whatever you use, mm -hmm. save it, tweak it, show it to somebody. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then when you feel like you're ready, you can just copy and paste it into here. And that's a lot less headache for you because that's right. what we're going for. So is there a, so what they could do is look at this first. Yes. See what the questions are. Right. This is an online form that you enter into here. So you will be, as you can see here, I'll just, you know, you do type into here, but um, maybe print out this page or something to, to yes. have a cheat sheet to work from. That's a great yeah. idea. Um, so that you know what you need to do, write it up somewhere else, and then you can just do a copy and paste, copy and paste right. each question into here. And something else you need to know when you're ready to fill out the form for, for sure and submit it, you have to put something in every blank. Mm. It might be none. And we'll talk about that a little later, but you have to put in your name and your library and your phone number and your email address mm -hmm. and you all that basic whatever. info. Yep. And project title is up to you, whatever you want to call it. Legos are good. I don't know. <laughs> I'm hitting on Legos today. I'm trying to do that. Then under selected category of grant project, that used to be pretty important, but now it's it's more of, of a general idea of what are you, are you celebrating books? Are you doing book discussion groups? Just it, so that's a big mm -hmm. space there. You don't have to fill it up. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot to say, you, it'll expand for you. But oh, it'll yeah. Actually, you can see that too. There's a little. There's a tiny that. little. You can just oh, barely yeah, see it. Her little see dots. It. So yeah, if you need more space, don't think that what you see here is what you're limited to. You yeah. can write as long write as you need out. to. Because what we want yeah. is information, mm -hmm. details. Now, I was noticing here at the top okay. of this, before we scroll down too sure. far, um, that it does mention a long form for projects requesting a grant amount of more than $1,000. Yes. So that's the difference between the long and the short is just yes. how much money you're asking for. And the short form has, a, a, it's a little 
Shorter. But obviously it's shorter. So I mean, it's called short. <laughs> it's so there must shorter. be less to it in some way, right? Where's my yeah. hands. Oh, there we go. Here we go. It's a little shorter. Okay. But not a whole lot shorter. But don't tell anybody. Okay. But so the big, the, the big obvious difference, difference is definitely the amount of money you think yeah. you need. Make sure you use the right one, and then the shorter one will last slightly fewer, which kind of makes sense. You're, you're doing a uh, idea, uh, obviously, maybe a smaller project. You might need less. We might need less info to evaluate. We always it. need yeah. more info. Always. Always need more than what we get. I have only. <laughs> I can only remember one time that I received a grant that had all the information I could ever hope for. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Steve Fosselman, Grand Island Public Library. Oh, I picked one. You are wonderful. <laughs> he filled it out, and it mm -hmm. had all the information. Okay, so we'll scroll okay. down a little more. Sure. Now we've talked about project title, selected category of grant project. Mm -hmm. Put something in here because otherwise it'll say, hey, you didn't fill this out, right. and you hit submit. So Every field needs to have something Think in about it. what it is you're doing and just put a, a description, in, like I said. Now under goals, this is tempting because it gets bigger. And occasionally people will put in like five or seven goals. You don't, you one, one is fine. What is your goal? Mm -hmm. Maybe two. More goals do not necessarily mean, oh, we're funding this one because it has seven goals. It doesn't mean we won't. Oh, seven, they're never going to get all that done. Forget <laughs> it. No, it's what you really think your goals are. So, but don't feel like you have to make up so you have three. If your goal is to celebrate books by having kids enjoy whatever your party is, then that's your goal. It's okay. Now, number three, this is probably the most important one. And probably the one that you will have the, yeah. be the biggest. <laughs> yes, yeah. And as you, as you copy and paste in there, it will expand. Automatically. Itself, I think. Nice. It all goes in there. Um, here's, now I have to turn to my other page because this is my page of what keeps a grant from being funded? Over closer this oh, way to the camera there. Oh, yeah, I, I was fine. You're getting a little cut off there. That's <laughs> I right. was scooching the <laughs> wrong way. Number one thing that keeps a grant from being funded is lack of details. Mm. So um, if you're thinking we're going to do six programs for teens this summer, it'll be great. And you put in there six programs for teens to come to the library and have fun. Tell mm. us what you're thinking. I think that some of the time people um, are confused that if they put it in here and they say, wait, I have it written down. Okay, for our program, we're going to um, we're going to have a program on geocaching, and then we're going to have one on teens discussing their favorite reads, and one Mario Kart tournament, and then we're going to have another program as a on geocaching as a follow up to the first one. Put those down. They don't have to be a whole lot of detail, but if you've already kind of thought about I think these programs will be popular and this is what the kids are going to come to. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's board gaming night and then um, Mario Kart another night or put it in there. As you get ready to actually do your program, you don't have to do those. This is a plan, basically. It's so not you know, in stone. Things yeah. may change when you finally get to really doing it and you realize, oh, wait, they don't actually like Mario Kart anymore. They like something yeah, else. Exactly. So we'll just use a different game. I mean, right. And Instead of Mario okay. Kart, we're going to do, I don't know what the most, my nephew, what is he playing? I forget. <laughs> so that's fine. Things change. And we know that. So, but we want to see that you've done some planning and you have some ideas. And, and what is it you exactly have in mind? Are the kids all coming to the, to the library for each program? Are, or are a couple of them somewhere else, like at the mm -hmm. park next door? And you're going to do, I don't know what, you come up with it. I don't have to. Yay. <laughs> but that's really important. What are you thinking of doing? Along with this is, in order to get a grant, you have to have at least one program for your target audience. Um, back when we were funding all workstations, people sent in an application mm -hmm. for an all workstation. Mm -hmm but they didn't have a program. So I'd have to call them on the phone and say, you if you want funding, you need to have a program. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have an open house and everybody's gonna, okay, then that's a program. And that's the thing that's, I think, a key for these grants. There's different grants that have different um, reasons for existing, I guess, the grant. Um, and there are grants that are just, we need new computers for something, we need furniture for this, we need equipment, and that's the only reason. And you may, in those kind of grants, say, because you know, we need like we need the uh, 
computer workstations because we need something to focus for the kids. And there are other grants that that's all you need to say is why. This one in particular, that's the important thing is you're having an actual event, something you're going to do with it, not just we want the stuff, but okay, that's great. You, you want the R workstation, which we don't do those anymore, but, um, or we want the Legos, we want the little bits, robot things. Okay, that's great. But then what are you going to do once you have them? You've got to have a plan, not just I want the cool new thing that everyone's talking about. What are you going to do with it after you get it? And if your whole idea is passive programming, we're going to get the little bits. We're going to cool. set this box out there and that box out there. Then that's a thing. That's a that's thing. That's a program. Passive, passive program, programming yeah. is a program. Mm -hmm. So say that. We're going to do passive programming. We're going to set the, a new box out every Tuesday or whatever it is you're thinking of. And it's just and open also, time to come yeah, in and do what you want with the, 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 yeah. the new stuff. You also have the option of saying, we're going to have an open house. I love open houses because people come in and get cookies and Kool-Aid. Well, Food like, is a great. Yeah. <laughs> I like Kool-Aid. Um, but you can say, to, we're going to invite the teens in to see all the stuff that we have. And then mm -hmm. we're going to explain to them how we're going to set them out once a week for mm -hmm. them to mess with. And that's the whole idea. But it doesn't, you know, if you have passive programming, that works. But say that, yeah. yeah. Now, you hit something that I think I better um, repeat. Okay. We, with the youth grants, we're no longer funding any kind of computer, mm -hmm. any kind of furniture, or food. We've never had been able to do food. Mm. Now, your local match, which we'll talk about later, mm. can do that. Can be the, for ah. the food or for the table that you need. You can mm -hmm. use your local match money for that. It's just you can't use the grant money for that. So, so you do have to create, so I get obviously part of this is here's our budget and how much money we need for the whatever. And then here's how we're going to, what we're going to do with the local match monies. Right. Perfect. Now down to number four over here on this fascinating application form. <laughs> now I say detailed timeline. It used to just say timeline, but then mm -hmm. people would say February, order stuff, March, put it out. Um, August right report. Well, that's not detailed enough. <laughs> I, a little bit more would be nice. Um, I'm not expecting you to say February 2nd, turn in order, February 15th, process books. No, let's mm -hmm. not go there. But, you, but put in there, you're going to purchase the books or the little bits and whatever and have them ready to go. So February 1st, you're going to purchase whatever. March 1st, you're going to have everything ready to go. Um, March 15th is the first day you put out items mm -hmm. on the table or whatever it is you're doing. Just so, again, along with the program description, you're showing us that you've done some planning. Mm -hmm. You figured out what you want to get, when you're going to get it, and when you're going to start actually having things mm -hmm. out for kids to do. So that's helpful. But if something goes wrong or changes, that's okay. Yeah. That's the thing too. You don't get in trouble for not sticking to your um, exact timeline. If for some reason you go to purchase the, the Legos and there's a delay in shipping and that's out of your control or a delay in payment or something, that's okay. You just you know adjust for that and do your thing. After, at the end, when you're done and I assume you do a final report, yes. you can then explain, here's what actually happened. Our original timeline was this, but because of whatever, and this is explaining whatever, yeah. this is why we had to change it. So if you're doing the, the teen program, for example, or um, grades four to six or whatever, and you uh, applied for Legos, and then you just you got a big gift ba batch of Legos from some nice person in your community, so you don't need to buy more, ah. why don't we buy little bits? Mm -hmm. Well, email me, say, here's what happened. A generous person donated boxes and boxes of Legos. We just don't really need any more. <laughs> what if we did this and changed our program? As long as it's for the same age group and it's a generally the same thing, we're doing after school programming or we're doing Saturday mm -hmm. programming and this is something we want to use with it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's when you completely change focus that I have to say, well, we gave yeah. you this grant for this age group, for this activity. For this purpose, and, yeah. And now you want to buy preschool books, but I understand that you need them, but no, not yeah. so much. So just We're always to, willing, we want to work with you. Yeah. And making sure you can do something cool with yeah. the monies we're giving. So 
that's okay. Just email me and say, well, things have changed. Okay, let's, what do you want to do instead? Let me know. Now, number five, identify youth service need on which this project is based. This doesn't have to be hard. This is just a little bit of something like, the parents in my community have been noticing the kids, you know, you don't have this and the, the kids are asking about it, our mm. kids are asking or something, or you yourself have noticed, you know, the library down the road, they have whatever, and I think that'd be pretty great for us, so we're going to give it a try. The big thing is, give it a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just a couple of sentences. That's kind of like where you got the idea from is yeah. what that is. Yeah. Pretty much. Why do you think this will work in your community? What is it and what do you think it'll do? Background information, that is helpful. One of my suggestions is a, a few years ago, a, a public library wanted to do a, an activity in their community and they noted one sentence, Paxton does not have a movie theater. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, I didn't know that. That and they put that right in there. A lot. That's the background <laughs> information. We don't have a movie theater. We want to do some movies for kids. We've got the mm -hmm. the um, movie license mm -hmm. from the state. Yay! So that's great. You don't have a movie theater, or other things like that. Some lots of people put in here things like uh, looking at the. And this is good. Not saying it's bad. This is good. Our community has 300 children ages five and under, and we want to do puppets or whatever it is you're doing for this we we know we have enough kids in our community that they will get a good turnout mm -hmm. we think yeah. for this activity and that brings you to number seven targeted number of views i get lots of different replies to this sometimes people mm -hmm. put in 300 because they have 300 kids in their community that are the age they're aiming at mm -hmm. that's okay i'm looking generally i'm looking for how many are you hoping we'll come in the library for this activity? Realistically. Yeah, realistically. Or, or it dream a little bit, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can dream a little. So you can <laughs> say 25, or you can say, wouldn't it be great if we had 30, <laughs> 40? You're not held, mm -hmm. again, you're not held to this number. This is just something you're thinking might happen. Mm -hmm. At so least you've good. thought about how much you need to potentially prepare. Yes. How if many, there is going to be 30 kids coming on, could you handle it? How many little snowmen do you have? Have do you think you should have ready to go for mm -hmm. your activity? Yeah, those kinds of things. And number eight is again a planning thing. Who's going to be doing this? If you have a children's librarian, that's probably who's going to be doing it. If you're the only librarian at your library, it's mm -hmm. probably you and maybe a board member who's volunteering with you. Just so you have a, we have an idea of yeah, you've thought about the time that's going to take to prepare for this and and do it and who's going to do it so then number nine is plans for finding staff and time for this additional project i don't think you have that on the shorter form yeah okay that might be one thing that's that's gone from that one but that's this kind of a follow-up to number eight who's going to do it and are, how are you going to get the time for them because right. if want you're adding to something new you need to figure think about yeah. if we're doing this new project we're going to have to um time management wise readjust what else we do in our jobs so that we can do this and am I going to pull in some volunteers to help make it happen or I realize that yes I'll have to cut off cut down on doing something else yeah. for the one period of time or something yeah one library sent in they wanted to start a toddler time but what they did was they had time frames they didn't have a, a preschool story time every Saturday for all year round. Mm. They had preschool story time for a two month period and then they took a month off. Mm. So during the month off from preschool story time, they were gonna try the toddler time. Oh, cool. So that time that had gone to that other one, they could now use and that makes sense. Yeah, I was, that's what I was gonna say. I, I, I was gonna actually ask, is is that always the case that you do have to say, oh, I have to stop doing something else to this new thing? But apparently, maybe not, obviously, then that's a perfect example <laughs> that you don't necessarily have to. You can just say just that's a perfect example of, well, we are, we're using other time that we did for something else and, Here's and our try this. Yeah. We'll try it. And if they like it. Or something else. And the example I was thinking of was um, we've done this event project, whatever, in the past, but we've lost the funding for it. Yes. Whatever monies we had is no longer available. Whoever volunteered or donated is no longer providing that to us. But we want to keep doing this project event. So we need the monies to just continue something we've been doing. That's a good point. And that's a, 
that's a good opportunity for a youth grant to step in for that. Mm -hmm. When these were originated, we were thinking of people trying something new that they hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. And we still like that, but we're not sure. against providing funding for mm -hmm. um, something that we think of as standard when you're mm -hmm. a, a public library asked for funding to do a summer reading program because they hadn't had one for several years. Mm. And so they were starting something up again that right. they, they hadn't. And mm -hmm. I think of summer reading programs as kind of standard library services. As part of you, their basic budget, yeah, but sometimes it doesn't. If you don't have the yeah. money for it, because yeah. you want to have the, even the papers, you know, mm -hmm. here, write your, here's papers for you to write your books down that you've read or your mm -hmm. time. So and, and this they, could also be used for expanding a current program yes, to a current yes. thing you're doing as well. So you don't have to come up with a, a, a whole totally new idea. It could be yeah. we're already doing a robot program with something, yeah. but we need more. Yeah. We want to expand it to something else, you know, more in-depth coding or something, or we, we've we maxed out you have so many kids that the, yeah. the number of uh, stuff, amount of equipment we have is not enough anymore, yeah. so we need twice as much, you know, that kind of. Or the, the ages or grades four to six have been using this and the seven, eight, nine graders want some they too. They want to do it too, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's try and get a grant. Expanding a current program that. to other grades, yeah. yeah. So all of these are possibilities. And then number 10, this is a sticky wicket. Oh, yeah. Means of evaluation. Well, you know, output measures. We all, all have always traditionally done that. 25 kids came in, 25 kids had fun. Well, there was <laughs> that one kid who cried for a little bit. He, he got over it. Whatever, you know, and also where we want you to try your best to do something that can let us know the outcomes. And uh, we've talked about these a lot. Out in the last sentence there, outcome measures might include changes in attitude or behavior, documentation of knowledge acquired, things like that. So that's harder to do. But I mean, you can do questionnaires, you can have parents depending on the age of who you're working with. Mm -hmm. Teens, I would say, you know, you can do a pre-test, post-test if you want to go that level. Maybe mm -hmm. you're doing the little bits. What what did you learn about stuff with mm -hmm. the little bits? It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be pretty basic, but at least talk with um, the parents if it's a younger age group and mm -hmm. the, the participants themselves. The kids for, themselves you know, what, yeah. what did you learn? Did you learn anything? Did you have a good time? Mm -hmm. Are you going to pursue this some more or not? Yeah. So output is the numbers, right. statistics, and then outcomes is more, I guess it's kind of the touchy feely. Right. <laughs> Was it a good thing? How did it work out? Yeah. And it's hard to say. I mean, you can say the kids had a great time and I could tell they were learning, mm -hmm. but that's harder to, to write down on a piece it of paper. It is, yeah. It's not as con concrete, but it's yeah. something, it's important, yeah. So I really don't have a good reason why we have number 11. <laughs> because we already asked you for your timeline, which probably said we're going to start our project. Mm -hmm. And what does begin project mean? Start buying stuff or Ordering, actually have a, yeah. a program? You know? Well, put in a date mm -hmm. that you think. And number 12 is very important because if you say yes, uh, yes, we might ask you to be on income. You may line. be one of these. Yes, well, absolutely. We've done it before. <laughs> we have. And if you say no, it'll all cry for a while. <laughs> that does not preclude you from getting a grant. But it's nice when you say mm -hmm. yes. Now we get to the budget form. Are you ready for numbers? Uh, I figured them out ahead of time. Uh, this is a little tricky because it'll it'll get excited. Don't let that. It'll say <laughs> you haven't done this because I that happened to me at the youth services retreat. I said, but I'm not down there yet. It's okay. Don't panic. So under co contracted services. That can be if you're hiring the Lego guy to come and give a presentation, mm -hmm. he's going to ask for some money. If you're using in-kind time for your children's librarian to get this project going for part of your match, then you would put that number in there too. But you have to figure that out ahead of time. What, how, approximately how much time will it take for them to, mm -hmm. to get the project? Of their, work time, yeah. their work time. Their work time. So, for Under example. contracted services, I put down $500 because we're hiring the Lego guy and then we're using some staff time for some stuff and it all worked out. Library materials, we're going to put in 200 there. Library materials could be purchasing books that relate to your project for your collection. You don't have enough Lego books mm -hmm. or books about coding because you're going to do a coding project. Also, um, you can put in there the little bits. 
this is where people call me and ask. It really doesn't matter because down below you're going to explain it. So library materials could be the little bits and the Legos or program materials and supplies could be that. Oh, see, we have personnel costs. Mm -hmm. That's where I should have put my, my yeah, the staff staffing. Time. So yeah. let's put a, a hundred there and and 400 up there. Uh, see, I don't even I don't know how to <laughs> fill this out. So program materials and supplies could most of the time I say this is for things like um, expendables. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to need streamers and paper and, and diamonds to put on your crowns you're making and all those kinds of not real diamonds, all those <laughs> kinds of things that are going to go out the door home mm -hmm. with the kids. It's generally under program materials and supplies. And you're hanging on to the little bits. Those belong to the library. So that's why I usually put, mm -hmm. would say put those under library materials. Ah, so the things that won't walk out the door would be library materials. And the right. things that might go with them would be the supplies. How come your estimated total? Oh, there it is. Never mind. See now, see how it adds up for you. <laughs> now your estimated total project budget is $800. The amount being requested as a grant from the Library Commission should be $600. See how it oh. got excited? Oh, that's right. See, that's oh. what I did wrong the other time. I forgot this was because this is the long form. form. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so uh, go back up there and mm, let's just go. do this. We're just gonna bump everything up until we hit a thousand. There we go. There. Okay. Now this is just telling you that what you request may mm. not be more than 75% of the total budget. And the total budget is a thousand. Mm. So, okay. But yeah, your total budget has to be more than the 75%. So this is the minimum oh, yeah, of what your grant has to be. Because what you're asking from the commission has to be, yeah. Because you're going to you do, go. you have to have your local match. You See have to put in some monies is? as well. Yes. <laughs> and I'm not very smart. Okay, so we have to get up higher. $250, there, now it's more. Now we're happy. Now we have to know what is... Um, 75% of 1400. You said you had a calculator. <laughs> oh, see, I figured it all out, but I figured it wrong. Okay. Because you did it based on the 800 on the short form. Yeah, I did on the 800 form, instead yeah. of a I mean, the thousand from the commission. So, so 1400, yeah. 1400 times 75% percent equals one thousand and fifty dollars from the library commission now it should be happy if you click down in the in the yeah one of those see it's not yelling at us so that's a good <laughs> okay so fourteen hundred all right fourteen hundred times ten percent is 140 so we have to put 140 in cash in here oh okay. it's 15 percent. did i do 10 no no it's 10. 10 yeah okay. so what am i doing 140. 140. oh it's happy now we just have to get 140 plus 1050 plus so that's 1400 minus 1190 So under the other in-kind local match should be 210. Let's see what happens. There that is? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Mm. Now that means your that your local match is $350. And it didn't get excited, so that must be okay. <laughs> now, you've got your numbers in there. As you go down, you're going to see empty spaces for you to tell us about the things you're doing that you put numbers in up above. Ah, so contracted services, that's the Lego. It has the so, definitions of what each of those sections yes. mean. Yeah. So any person not on the payroll, see how wrong I was? So if you type in there, the Lego guy, or do you want me to type? I, I don't know why I'm making you type. Lego guy. Lego guy. <laughs> I don't know what he charges, but I want to know on here. So I'm going to say he charges 250. I have no idea if that's right. <laughs> and we put some more numbers up there. So we're also going to do um, Mrs. Science 
And how, can you scroll up for how much we had in that category? Oh, we ended up bumping up to 600. Okay, so Mr. Science is going to be expensive. <laughs> what is that, 450 plus 250? No, 350? Does that add up? Yes. Okay, yes. 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 That's all I want. I want to know in here who it is you're planning on. Now, maybe the Lego turns out, Lego guy broke his leg. Oh, please don't break your leg. <laughs> and he can't come. Then you're going to do something else. You're going to mm -hmm. find another person. That's okay. This and is what you're yeah, planning on your plan. in the first place. Yeah. Okay, so library materials might be in there. You don't have to do all the work. How do I get this? Good tab? I there we go. Okay, so little bits you're going to buy library materials we end up with 300 oh, good i was going to buy 500 of those <laughs> okay 200 and <clears throat> books okay now c list see how i did that mm. 100 so you want to add some books to your collection about coding or other things to do with the little bits and that's part of library materials so um, you don't have you can put it in here if you're just buying a couple or you can add, attach a list a separate document that when mm -hmm. you when you email me your signature page you can add a, a separate document that says here's the books we're thinking of buying and here's what they cost right now mm -hmm. to get us up to the hundred right because we want to know you don't have to buy those books Look, this great new book just came out. We're going to buy that. Between instead. the time when we submit yeah. the application and we actually right. do the project, February, of course. February when you're buying? Yeah. Okay, personnel costs, that's who's on your staff. And we did 200. We did 200, so. Oh, I just hate to um Children's librarian. So 200? Yeah. Oh. Wait. Hmm. Um, so twenty dollars an hour because I like to be generous. <laughs> so that would be one. How much? That's twenty times. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Math. Two hundred divided by twenty. It's going to equal something I should know. Ten hours. Ten hours at. Whoops. At. Twenty each, twenty dollars an hour. That's yep. that's shows us how you figured that out. Mm -hmm. I know lots of librarians who would love to get twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah, but they deserve it. Okay, so program materials and supplies. That was around a hundred or two hundred. Uh, we upped that one to three hundred. Three hundred to make it work. Yeah. Okay, so now in this part we're gonna go um, ribbons. Sticky gems. I don't know how this relates to little bits <laughs> and coding. I'm just filling out the form. You have to make it work. <laughs> uh, let's see. Plastic hat. That's what you're going to put all this on. And then give us some generals. So your ribbons are going to be. Yeah, there's the ideal would be somewhere for, where you looked up where yeah. you can purchase this, and it would be like. A package of 40 yeah. ribbons cost, you know, ten dollars or whatever. So yeah. one package, where's the key? Okay. One package is would you say ten dollars? Yeah, I was just making oh, up I made things. it up. I don't know. Anyway, I'm making it up too. So plug that in there. And explain we're gonna buy yeah. 20 packages or yeah. whatever it comes out to. Right. Yeah. So you can decorate your plastic hats <laughs> so that you can wear them when you play with a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Get creative. <laughs> why, why should I hold you back? So put all of that in there. What you think? Where you? And if you want to, at some point, again, when you're sending an email to me with the attachment of your signature page and maybe your page about um, the book lists, then if you found something in a catalog and you want to copy that from their web page oh, sure. and say, here's what I'm looking you at. Include that, yeah. You can include that because that makes it clear to us where, that, where what you're looking for. Okay, so tab. Now we don't need any training, so I'm just going to put none in here. But this is one of the cases where you have to put something in each field. I think field. you do. Yeah. Now, if you want to try it without, you can. Promotion. 
you're going to promote it on your web page and you're going to hand out a little note to kids, but you don't really want that as part of your grant amount. You don't need that. it. And other, I, I think we'll just put none there. Okay, now if we hit save and submit, it won't let us because we didn't put in who we are or where we, we didn't live do or any anything. of the previous stuff. We didn't stuff. do any yeah, of that obviously. previous stuff. So, but it, if it lets you get to here and it hasn't already stopped and said, no, this number doesn't work, that's to help you work through it. But mm -hmm. always you can call. You'll see, you saw as that pop ups came up, it will double check your math and remind you of, well, you need to actually have this much for this grant. Yeah. And yeah. And maybe you should use the other grant application if you only need eight hundred dollars worth of right. stuff from us or six hundred from us. So that saves you a lot of time and trouble. With your report form, which um, you can get to from the original page I took you to, that'll be due like mid September of two thousand nineteen. Oh, then after the yeah, event. after you're done doing yeah. your project and et cetera, we want you to ask for the money before the end of June of 2019, because that's right. part of our, it's state our money. Our financial budget, yeah. So we have to get that out to you. If your project isn't going to happen till August, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Ask for the money towards in June, and then have your project in August, because uh -huh. the sun, the stars, whatever, <laughs> will be whatever better than Maybe is. you're doing something with that because of the summer reading program mm -hmm. next year. And then in your report form, we need you to to include um, copies of your receipts or your mm. invoices. Do you want to go back to the main page now sure to show can. that? Or now this year has a link for the signature page. Oh yeah, let's is go that there. Let's go something there. that I'll... oh that's okay. Yeah, see, because we didn't finish, but that's okay. Yeah, we you normally would not do this until you actually hit the save and submit. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then leave the page here, and you can just print this off or. Um, we now have the project director, which might be the children's librarian. And then if it is not the library director who signs there, then the library director needs to sign. And we do like to have the library board president. So that you know the board's so, aware yeah. of what's going on. So they know what you yeah. do. And we found it's helpful to put in name of library because I've gotten a few of these in the mail that just say Mary Jackson, mm -hmm. signature of library director, can't read it. Board and I go. I wonder which library this is. And they look on because it's like because it's separate because the because uh, the form yeah. the actual application form is submitted electronically. Yes. And then you have to do this and print this and mail or fax it to us and separate. You, or so you can will scan it and email it to me, and then I know your email uh, address. Cool. Ha, ha, ha. Well, now this but, says oh, oh applications are are done electronically. Okay. Yes. I was like, yeah. wait, faxes and mail will not be. So the application itself, because it's online, has that submit button. Right. That is only done electronically. The signature page can then be sent however works best for you. Yes. Mail it to Sally, uh, email it to her right. as a scanned document, or um, fax, fax it to it. the Library Commission too. Um, yes. Yeah. Good clarification. Don't anybody so get now, confused. <laughs> now let's go back to Youth yeah. Grants for Excellence and we'll scroll down to the bottom again because that's where all the good stuff is. Now you'll see down here, final report. We have two years worth because there's a few people still sending in their report from the 2017 grants. So up above that are the, the recipients oh, okay. for this year. So you have a Word version or a PDF version mm -hmm. and you can Click on that and uh, hang on. Not a problem. There we go. <laughs> there we are. So here I'm just asking you, what was it you you got received the grant for? What activities did you end up having? Describe if there's anything you're still waiting to do, because that can happen. And further down, this gets kind of long, but we want both quantitative and qualitative. And look, here's new examples, how yeah. many children attended, and then what happened because of those children attending right. this event. So those are examples of filling in both of those. Then there's page two, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that was negative about your project? That's okay, that's good. You want to learn from these, yeah. I had a, a librarian contact me one year. She was getting ready to fill out her report, and she was worried that it didn't work. What she, I can't remember what she wanted to do. It just didn't work. Nobody came 
for whatever reason. Mm. And she thought that if she said that on her report, she would never get another grant. I said, oh, no. no, our whole idea is if you're trying something new, try it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't work. That's possible. You'll learn from, yeah. and th this is something I was, um, was going to say new, but it's been around for at least, well, it's been known for a long time, but um, a lot of uh, conferences I've attended um, in the last 10 years or so, they've actually put on, people have put on presentations about failure. Yeah. It's okay to fail. Um, a panel of librarians talking about when something they did didn't work. I mean, you're so used to seeing presentations about here's this great cool thing I did and everybody came and it was such success and here's how you can do it at your library too. And that's great, but it doesn't always happen and yeah. that's okay. So there's a lot of things that uh, presentation people saying, let's all talk about what totally failed. Nobody came or the equipment didn't work. And so all the kids thought we were, you know, incompetent, in, you know, whatever. And that's okay because you can learn from it and yeah. say, yeah, it didn't happen. They didn't come. And I figured out why. I, I, I talked to someone and found out, oh, well, the kids at the school didn't get the flyers. So somehow the communication broke down. Or part of this could be, um, and I'm telling you this, but I'm hoping it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know why. I'm going to try. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to try and figure out. I haven't figured out yet why it didn't work, but I plan on... I'm not defeated. <laughs> the stuff we're gonna make it something I, happen. I won't be defeated. And, I've got the equipment. I'm gonna figure yeah. out what did what didn't work right and try again next spring or next year or something. But thank you so much for the stuff. At least we'll we'll do it again. And the answer might be the air conditioner broke in our library and nobody was coming in. Yeah. Yike. Mm -hmm. If they're used to air conditioning, they want it. Sure. But the second half of that question is, what did you learn from? The negative results mm -hmm. and how would you do things differently if you figured that out yet because maybe you haven't like you said she hasn't figured it out yet but she's mm -hmm. going to try something else yeah did the activities and their outcomes or consequences fulfill your original goals and objectives maybe yes maybe mm -hmm. you had the wrong maybe. goals but this is a great project you There's discovered something of, else yeah. the kids went a completely different direction than what you planned <laughs> um, uh, but they learned something different yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then how do you plan to continue the activities you have begun? If this is something that can be ongoing, how do you yeah. how do you plan on keeping it up? And mm -hmm. is there another kind of follow-up that you might need? Mm -hmm. And then an important thing is don't forget to include copies of all your invoices or receipts. And people are doing that, but what I am noticing is they are sending me enough invoices and receipts to cover the grant amount, but it doesn't show me how they whole project. Remember how our whole project mm. was $1,400? There's the in-kind. There's what did you There's spend your kind. own monies on? So, so this would be receipts these, for everything, everything related to the project, whether it was the whatever amount we gave you or, and the money that and, you spent yourself. Right. It needs to total up to that grand total. So that, yeah. that way I don't have to call you on the phone and say, yes, but I remember um, you figured out how much you were of the librarian children's librarian salary was going toward this project but you didn't include that in the final i mean mm -hmm. it's in the grant application but is that the amount of time she really did use and mm -hmm. is that your local match mm -hmm. um in kind so yeah just now, another page it's just a piece of paper it says children's librarian so many hours that's so much an hour mm -hmm. equals this much money yeah i say we, we track it all, sure yeah. <laughs> we don't need to see like your time sheets no, or any of that kind of thing no or payroll that. or see yeah. payroll nope. um now we do have a question here that came in okay. jan is asking oh can, can the, and the question is can the same library apply for this each year as opposed to once in a lifetime <laughs> Yes, the same, Three, same yes. library can you apply. You can apply repeatedly, yes. Exactly, and actually, we have had years where this one library had two different applications in. Maybe one was for a toddler time and one was for teen services. Yeah, and two different projects. Two different projects. Oh, sure. And two projects for a library, two different applications have been funded. Sure. Though it is more likely that my committee, I'm not the only one deciding my mm -hmm. committee, will say, well, we only have, we have this much money and this much has been asked for. So let's just, if there's the a lot of, if there's a, a bunch of libraries that apply yeah. and they're all great applications, we may yeah. need to split it up between more libraries. And then one of your du um, multiple ones might not be able to be funded is right. the idea, but it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't. Yeah. 
And what we would probably do is if the amount you ask for is pretty similar, you want 500 for the toddler time and, and 550 for the teen one is we'd say, we're going to give you $500. You can either do your toddler project or 500 towards the teen project. Mm, which let you, you choose do. which one you'd like you to tell complete. Us which is more sure. important to your community because mm -hmm. you know better than us. And that reminds yeah. me of one thing. When you're filling this out, remember that you know more about your library and your community than we do. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of librarians and I'm very happy about that, but I am not in your community. So when you're filling out your form and you're saying, we're gonna do this and this is why, because our community thinks this is a good thing, give us enough information to understand what's what this is gonna help your community with and what it is exactly you're gonna do. And one of the best ways to do that is to write it all out in that separate word processing program, mm -hmm. print it off and give it to either a library board member saying, here's what I'm aiming for, have I, have I made it clear? Or you can send it to your system administrator who hopefully mm -hmm. will have an opportunity to look at it yep. and give They'd you some advice. They'd be happy to do that look for your regional library system administrator yeah. and, and see if they would like system give System director, I'm sorry. System director, system yes, director. System director. I was wrong. <laughs> but, and you also can send it to me, but I will tell you that I, I have failed in the past sometimes, so, you know. With what? It was just well, that. I, I helped somebody write an application and it didn't make it. <laughs> I thought it was good. But the, the, Sorry. like you said, you've got a committee and there's other committee. people that do participate in this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so if, if an application comes in and I am confused when I read it, mm. I will call you and say, I'm not sure what this means. Mm -hmm. And you can re reapply, mm -hmm. resubmit, revise, or you can send me yeah. an email with here's what I meant in this section, and mm -hmm. I'll print it off and add it to that. Yeah, that. just because something might not be clear doesn't mean we we say meh and set it aside. No. There's going to be a back and forth. That's right. Because uh, we want to understand what you're doing. You might have some great idea, but just didn't write it out as clearly as you know some people are better at just chatting and talking about stuff yeah and that's okay but you know we're gonna want need something in writing to figure it out yeah Ooh, that's a good question uh, okay we have another one. yep um we have another question <laughs> question came in from wendy uh is a gaming system like an xbox eligible for a teen program with this grant yes it is yes because it well, is, you mentioned mario kart i did as I did, a game yeah, yeah. Um, when we say we don't fund computers, we're talking about either CPUs or laptops mm -hmm. that can be used for a variety of purposes. Now, mm -hmm. with the, an Xbox is certainly got computer stuff in there, <laughs> but it's a, dedicated to that. It's got to have a certain purpose. Certain, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, not to just to that one program, but dedicated to gaming. It's a gaming thing, generally. So yeah. that's not the same. So mm -hmm. that's my definition, and I'm sticking with it. And you're in charge. <laughs> this is what's great about these grants that we offer here at the commission. It's these are not. We're not doing a like a a sub grant type thing from ALA or IMLS right. or something right. where they yeah. dictate the rules of how it can be done to us. These are our own grants. Yes. So we get to decide we <laughs> what we think is appropriate or not. So yes, um, so yeah. system. All we'll you have to do is say, you know, a lot of kids in our community love to play whatever it is mm -hmm. and not very many of them actually own that gaming system. So mm -hmm. we'd like to host a tournament, of, yeah. a Mario Kart tournament. And, and then we'll have these books have out that happen yes. to relate in some way or other to mm -hmm. Games and gaming and or racing. Or racing. I mean, totally, oh, you know, yeah. go, like think outside the, bo the box. The box. Get it, box. <laughs> Xbox box. Sorry, sorry. See, I like Mario Kart because I could actually stay on the road part of the time. Oh, I'm horrible at driving uh, games. I, I'm the opposite. I can. I am always crashing. Uh, driving and um, flying things in video games, oh. I am terrible at. I can run and jump and leap and do puzzles oh. and. Um, headshot with arrows and things sorry man i was playing the good. new tomb raider last night till pretty late <laughs> i'm not an xbox i have the ps4 no. um but the driving stuff i'm just horrible at. Yeah. well that's probably because that's the only thing i've played and that's over at my sister's house <laughs> you so practice yeah i don't anyway have, I don't we're getting off track stuff. here <laughs> good questions and yeah. i would like to also emphasize as you're looking and thinking about what you might want to do and looking at the form and the things i've said about how to fill it out and you have a question that I didn't cover or you don't think I was clear enough, just call me. I'm here a lot of the time. 
Oh, all ahead and, of the time. Yeah. Or I mean, we have voicemail, we have email. We yeah. do. Mm -hmm. And when I'm when I'm gone the week before the grants are due, I'm going to be at the CSLP board retreat. So I will have a laptop right. with Yeah, email. actually I was gonna email. I was gonna clarify yeah. that. Yeah. The week before the grant deadline just happens to coincidentally be with where she's um, going to be off at a, but it's work related. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, she have a laptop. So if you do have a question um, that week, yeah, definitely email Sally and then um, maybe not immediately, but she'll get back I, to you again because she's going to be at meetings, but as soon as she can with an answer. So that would be the best way to do is to do that. Yeah. That week. So don't panic because she's not here that week before. Yes. And if you're doing your application at the last minute and it's 1158 and you know, Plug things in there and send it. We'll fix it later. Because mm -hmm. yes. after mm -hmm. midnight, I can't accept it. Mm -hmm. So plug in. I'm not sure. Let me. Let me. I'll get back to you. Uh, yeah. More details to come. I mean, <laughs> I do need your numbers, etc. I want most of it in there. But if yeah. you just have to do a couple more things and you're worried about the time, just plug that in because I want your application to show up and be considered. Mm -hmm. And we can work out mm -hmm. the other part. Sure. I hopefully you won't be in that situation where it's the last minute that yeah. that happens to people sometimes. And there's a link right down here. Um, we have this on all of our websites. You just question that to contact Sally if you're not sure about where's your email address or whatever, and it automatically pops up with where you can just type a message it's right here. You don't even have to be in your email account or anything. You'll put in your name, your email, um, and just type in what you want, subject and message, and it automatically goes to Sally. Um, that, that works great. So if you're just not even able to get to your email account or something or figure out what is her email address, good point. use that link there. Thank you. Now we can, if you want to go, no, that's the database. I thought we could go to the grants page from here. Oh, the main page, sure. But I wanted to mention a couple other things here that I was noticing over here. We, you do have a link here to some um, oh, good yes. examples from previous youth grants. Right. So um, these are some from previous years that I'm not going to open them all right now um, that you can look at. So I, they, I guess these are ones you said these guys did a great job. They of, did a great job. So if you're going mm -hmm. like, well, how, what kind of timeline should I do? You can look at these and say, well, it doesn't have to be that hard. I can do that much. Mm -hmm. or they aren't all up there for the same reason. So they're not all 100% perfect. Mm. So you might have to look at a couple and, and compare them and say, yeah, well, this one's better. Maybe I'll copy how they this did This is more theirs. like what, what I like to write, like how I like to write. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also have this here, tips for writing a successful grant application. Oh, that's where that is. Yeah. I was trying to find that the other day. <laughs> and now this is something, let me see how this works here. Now this is off of the one for our continuing education grants. You can see it says CE here. Yeah. So, um, and this is actually very general information as you can see. Um, show detail, um, clearly explain your purpose, be sure to include detailed budget. I like compose um, a, a readable, readable document. document. It's just like you're mm -hmm. just start chatting. Sally, mm -hmm. I don't, you don't have to have that in there later, but <laughs> I would like a grant because I think blah, 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 blah. Just start typing that way. Like mm -hmm. you're chatting with me and mm -hmm. the committee. Yeah. So these are just some good tips for any kind of grant that you may yeah. do. Um, as you, so don't just use this for ours, but yeah. it's kind of good general overview about what would be, um, good things to do. We'll see now down, we'll have to fix that down below. It says make a copy of your grant application for your records before mailing and or submitting. We don't allow you to mail it to us anymore. So well, well it says to, and or submitting. Yeah, that's so, okay. So I guess yeah, yeah. you're right. It's mm -hmm. general. So you might be mailing it yeah. to some other organization. Mm -hmm. There's and we'll dates for youth grants for excellence. That, that's the whole thing. Yeah. So yeah, this is what you want to go to. This is our main page for grants at the commission which uh, now Sally had you go through to get to her youth grant one here off the right. children's and YA fly out menu that we have. But you may have noticed down here in our um, library commission page, there's one that also mentions grants, funding, um, and anything related to getting monies. Um, where over here on the right, we have NLC related grants. We have other grants available uh, that we talk point you to as well, but we're talking about commission things right now. Um, specific links to things that we've done, but we've got a general page for the main ones that the library commission is currently offering with mm -hmm. state money um, that we are doing here. Um, 
And did you want me to start talking about this? Yeah, general thing as switch? Okay, so we're kind of wrapping up here. Do you have any questions? Because we are a little after 11 o'clock right now, but we did start a little after 10. I'll wait until we log in, so that's okay. Um, we'll keep going until we get everything answered for you and all the details we want to explain. Um, we are recording, so if you do need to take off and you know log out because we're at the end of the hour, um, that's all you've allotted for it, that's fine. We are recording, and it'll be available to you later. So this is our Library Commission grant schedule where we've got the grants that we offer here via the Nebraska Library Commission. And this year we are offering three out of the four due to uh, budget constraints um, within the state. We are um, this year unable to offer library improvement grants. These are ones for actual uh, equipment and building upgrades and things like that. Um, those are usually more pricier grants, um, more, more cost more, and we don't have the funding for that. But we are offering, again, well, the Youth Grants for Excellence, which we just talked about all today. August today. 31st, I was right. That's right. End of August is when they came available for that one. There's a due date here. Um, when the recipients, you will be notified by November, so you'll know by the middle of November if you've gotten the grant. Um, and then this is the link directly to that Youth Grants page that we started at um, today. The other two grants we are offering this year are going to be uh, continuing education and training grants and internship grants. And next week's Encompass Live is actually about those two grants. Yay! I How will, convenient. Yes. <laughs> Myself and um, Holly Duggan, who is our uh, continuing education coordinator, will be presenting, will be next week's Encompass Live show talking about these two grants coming up. Um, we've offered internship grants um, pretty regularly over the years. Um, those will be open. Oh, I, these are our available dates are we're putting in next week. It'll be as soon as we get everything updated on the pages. They're still both a work in progress. So if you do click on any of these, which we're not going to do right now, there's going to be old information. So don't go to it yet. By next week, we'll be all good. But we do have our dates for when these will be due. Um, we've determined those already. Internship grants are coming up next. They'll be due November 9th. And then CE and training grants, December 7th. So think, you know, look ahead to those. We're doing, we're trying to space out our grants one each month. Um, the right. youth in October, internship November, and then CE and training in December. Um, so you can apply for all three. Oh, sure. They all have different reasons and There's purposes, no, and we'll learn about the other yeah. two uh, next next week on Encompass Live. Um, we do have a question that just came in, though. What is the most money we can ask for in a grant? The most. Oh, um, that's a good question. We'll talk about the youth grant and the other ones yeah. we'll talk about next week. The youth grants. Um, is there a max? Because those the I, form I, did say yeah. the, the short form is for less than a $1,000 right. project, and the long one says it has to be more than 1000 but what is the... Well, the, do you have an upper? I have a total of twenty five thousand dollars to give, give away. Right. And the closer you get to twenty five thousand dollars, the less likely you are to get. Yeah, that's kind of huge. We <laughs> might like fund a portion of it. Um, I don't like to put a top end on it because I don't know what your project is. I've had mm -hmm. people ask for five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and they had a good reason for their project and why mm -hmm. that amount would really make it work. Right. So um, more than five thousand, I, I mean, even five thousand is is yeah. a, a lot. And this is we're talking specifically the about the youth grants. The other two we'll we'll discuss next right. week. Right. Uh, we're still working on those. So as as Sally said, there's twenty five thousand dollars available in total. So um, I would say uh, feel free to put in whatever you think right. you might have need but with the you know with the knowledge that there's only a certain amount to go on around for everyone and the odds are you might not get yours because we've run out of money or you might get a reduced amount we have done that before I've done that with the um, live improvement grants where we said great project we like it but we can only give you a you know two-thirds of the money you asked for you're gonna have to come up with the rest you know but, sorry, whatever. Something else we've <laughs> so done that may in the past is I've encouraged libraries to say, you know, make this a, a two or three step project. This year you're asking for this much to get this much done towards your overall project. Mm -hmm. So you need 2,500 this year for this part of your project. Apply next year. This is the second part of my project. I got grant mm -hmm. funding last year to do this. This year we're going to do this part of it. Mm -hmm. It's not a guarantee you're going to get funded again, but it's a, you know, if you know that if that's, you know yeah, this, if you mm -hmm. can break it down that way, then you might get 
your whole thing funded, but over course over time, of, over a couple of years worth years. of yeah. yeah. It might and, take you that long to do it anyway, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. And youth grants, we've been pretty um, solidly been able to uh, uh, provide them every year. Um, they're very popular. They're very necessary. The other grants, it's always very depending on funding and what's going on. Um, uh, so that's yeah. a good point. So far, so good on youth grants. Yay. Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed for us. So we keep having our budgets approved. Yeah. yeah. So, anything else you want to uh, you needed to mention? I wanted to show on the pages today. I'm sure I'm missing something. <laughs> And I'll, I'll or if anybody has any other last minute questions you want to ask of Sally while we're here talking about the youth grants. Or email me yeah, true. today, tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll answer. I'll say, oh, I should have said that on the webinar, but here you go. So if you have any other questions, type them in. A wrap up last thing you want um, to say. I just uh, every year look forward to the things that people are doing. And there's, uh, there's always something new you hear about. There's yeah. something new. And there's also people who, who notice that somebody in the state was doing a project and that's a good idea i want to do that mm -hmm. just say um so and so library did this project i think mm -hmm. it's great i think it'll work for our community let's give it we want to give it a try here's our application and you'll notice here we do have this grants recipient database that's oh, list that's linked point. underneath each of these this is where you can look up and see all the grants that we've ever um had throughout the state um throughout the history of and you can see here all the different grants included going back Looks like the oldest date is 1998. Yeah. yeah. We used to call them the children's grants for excellence, and then we mm -hmm. changed it to use. To include grants. teen and so, older yeah. kids, yeah. So you can choose a particular grant name, a year, and you can see going back all the way to 98 um, if you want to choose a particular library. But if you just want to see in, let's do this. I'm, I'm curious. Okay. Children's grants for excellence in 1998. We're going to go all let's the way back out. just for the fun of it. What's um, that grant? And you can see who did something, how much they got, and a little, just a general thing. Book Buddies program, oral history project, pairing adults, older adults with teens. So if you want to, you can see what other libraries have done, how much money they got, and then you could potentially reach out to some of these to get some ideas about what they do. If you want to chat with them about, hey, I saw you did this thing, and we're interested. Can you talk to me more about it? I'd like to do, you know, some things, you know, I think, it's, I think it would work in our library, like you said. And that now go down a little bit because I'm seeing something that I should mention Spanish language collection for new residents in general if you if you notice that your your um, 600s are woefully out of date and that's what you want to do for your youth grants it's not going to get funded we understand that you need to improve your collections but mm -hmm. um, this was a special case um, generally, it needs to be part of a, to get books for your collection, it needs to be part of a larger or a different, you know, activity or activity or event that will be like happening. That. Mm -hmm. If you say, I just really need to get rid of these terrible old books, yes, I know. That's not do, what this but, grant is for. <laughs> but if you do a project that relates to the 600s and you can replace a certain amount of those in there mm -hmm. because you had these activities, you want to study insects. Kids love bugs. <laughs> so I don't know, are they in the 600s? I don't know. Probably. Off the top of my head, I'm horrible with that. Sorry. Anyway, my bad. Bad librarian. <laughs> but, you know, it, I'm, I'm sorry that we don't just fund it to help you with your collection. No, not this particular grant. Right. There's other Good grants point. out there that exist in the world that you that wouldn't that be able you to can. be. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. maybe the, okay. I see a thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right. No extra questions. questions so. All right. I think we will wrap it up then since we're getting to the end of our time here. So, um, that will wrap it up for all of our session here about Youth Grants for Excellence. Go to the website, um, start putting together your proposals, um, get them submitted, ask, contact Sally for more questions. So, um, yeah, like I said, that will wrap it up for today's show. I'm going to go now. Um, to go to our Encompass Live website, you have a couple different ways you can get there. I want to show you where that is at. If you are on our commission webpage, it's actually under Education and Training. Over here, Encompass Live webcasts. You can also type Encompass Live into our shut site, or we have so far, I like showing this, Encompass Live. You just type it into your search engine of choice. We are the only thing called that ends the internet so far. Yeah. Fingers crossed for that. So if you type that in, you will get our main page here at the Nebraska Library Commission, Encompass Live. Uh, 
Today's show is being recorded and will be posted to our archives. The archives are right here underneath our upcoming shows, and it will be at the top of the list here. And we will have, um, we don't have a presentation, but it will be just like this one. We'll just have a link to the recording in this case. And there is also will be a link to the uh, youth grants uh, website. So you have a quick link to that. It will be right here. Everyone who attended today's show live and re registered for today's show, because we have a bunch of people that signed up and didn't weren't able to make it here live, will receive an email from me later this afternoon, most likely letting you know as, as long as um, everything cooperates. Uh, we post our recordings up to our uh, Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. Uh, and I will send you a link, um, email letting you know what's available. We also post to our various social sites as well, Twitter, out to our mailing lists in general, Facebook and whatnot. Um, so look for that. I uh, hope you join us next week. As I mentioned, next week's show is the 2018 Continuing Education Training and Internship Grants. Uh, Holly and I will be here next week uh, talking about those grants that are coming up. They will be, um, we're working on the websites and then specific information right now, so look for them to come live before by next Wednesday at the Yay. latest because we have our show yeah. <laughs> uh, and they will both be due coming up in November and December so please do join us for that show and any of our other upcoming shows you'll notice the one right after that there is no registration link that week is our Nebraska Library Association and Nebraska School Librarian Association annual conference so that is the one week of the year that Encompass Live is goes on hiatus we take one week off of throughout the year so that people can attend the conference um, both us um, librarians and the new commission staff as well. So that will be the one we will be um, not having a show here. Uh, and Compass Live is also on Facebook. We've got a link here to our Facebook page and I've got it open over here as well. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We post notifications about when things are going on. Here was a reminder to log in on the fly for today's show. When our archives are available, we post on here as well. Here's the one for the recording from last week's show um, and when, we, when new shows are coming up. So if you do like to use Facebook, do give us a like and you'll be um, keep up on what we're doing over there. Other than that, that wraps up today's show. Thank you very much for being with thank me, you. Sally, joining me here in my office for today. <laughs> um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.